Hi boys and girls, I'm the reading teacher. There is a lot going on in our world right now, and some of it's a little bit scary. And some of you might be wondering, what can I do to help? Or maybe you're thinking, what can I do so that when I grow up, the world is a more peaceful place? Well, maybe you can become the kid who changes the world. Let's read this book together and we'll find out what did these people do that made a difference. The Kid Who Changed the World. This is written by Andy Andrews and it's illustrated by Philip Hurst. Ooh, and I love how the author and illustrator give us a clue of the theme of the book on their end papers. And you're gonna see some butterflies. That's gonna be the theme of the book. And the theme of the book is just what the book is about, the subject, or it's an idea that keeps happening over and over in the story. So we're gonna see what the theme of this book is. And as I'm reading, see if maybe you can figure out what the butterflies have to do with the story. Here we go. The Kid Who Changed the World. to tell you a story about the kid who changed the world. His name was Norman Borlaug. Have you ever heard of Norman Borlaug? How could he change the world if we've never heard of him? Hmm, let's keep listening. Norman lived on a farm in Iowa. He loved to play hide and seek with his little sisters in their father's cornfields. Norman was tall and skinny with hair so light it looked like the silk that sprouted from the ears of corn. Norman was very good at hiding in the cornfields. Norman tiptoed quietly so his sisters couldn't hear him. He crept along until he was just close enough to catch them. Gotcha! The girls giggled and squealed. Now you hide, Norman. Norman ran to hide in the field, careful not to knock down any corn stalks. Just yesterday, his father reminded him, you know, son, we're blessed to have all this corn. There are many people in the world who do not have enough to eat. What would it be like to be hungry all the time? Norman wondered as he looked at the endless rows of corn. There has to be a way this corn can feed hungry people, he thought. Ooh, did you notice the butterfly? Right then and there, Norman decided to change the world. Have you ever had an idea like that where you think, you know what, if we could only just do this as a world, or if our world could only be like this, and I think I can help it. Norman decided that he was going to do something about that. Norman learned everything he could about plants. When he was grown, he worked for a man named Mr. Wallace. Mr. Wallace said, Norman, I want you to use what you've learned in school to make special seeds. These special seeds will grow into super plants and feed more people than ordinary plants. Wow. So Norman decided that he wanted to change the world and then he's actually doing something about it, isn't he? He learned everything he could about plants. So he had an idea and he didn't just put the idea in the back of his brain and say, well, maybe it'll work out someday when I'm older. No, he was proactive. He went out and he thought, you know what? I'm gonna make this happen. I'm gonna learn everything that I can to help change the world in the way that I think it should, can be changed. To make the special seeds, Norman had to go to faraway places and work in the rain and summer heat, but he never, gave up. Finally, Norman developed the special seeds that grew into super plants. Norman's special seeds of corn and wheat and rice were sent all over the world. And the super plants fed the hungry people just like Norman dreamed about as a boy. A whole family could eat dinner from one super plant. And guess what? Norman saved more than two billion people from starving. Two billion. It's true. Norman was the kid who changed the world. But the story isn't over yet because 
Norman worked with a lot of people who helped him along the way. So do you think they also helped change the world? Those people that helped Norman? Let's see. It's true. Norman was the kid who changed the world. Or maybe it was a kid named Henry. Hmm, Henry? Who's Henry? I want to tell you a story about a kid who changed the world. His name was Henry Wallace. Henry's father was a professor and one of his students was a young man named George. Hmm. How many of you are thinking Wallace, Wallace? We've heard that name somewhere, Wallace. Let me go back, oh, look. When he was grown, he worked for a man named Mr. Wallace. Here's Norman and here's Mr. Wallace. Do you think it could be the same Mr. Wallace, Henry Wallace? Let's find out. Henry loved to go with George on expeditions in the countryside. George knew more about plants than anyone Henry had ever known. There's Henry and that's his friend, George. Henry peered over the edge of the water to inspect a plant growing on the bank. Don't get too close to that water, Henry, George said. Your daddy will have a fit if you get eaten by a hippopotamus. Henry laughed. Hippos don't live in Iowa. I'm just trying to get a better look at this flower. You know, Henry, God gave us plants as a way to learn. We can use that knowledge to help others. It's a very important mission. George, I want that to be my mission. Will you help me? Of course. Remember, Henry, God made you to make a difference. And I believe you will. Henry learned so much about plants that he grew up to be the U.S. Secretary of Agriculture. Then Henry Wallace became the Vice President of the United States of America. From that important office, Vice President Wallace, you can still call him Henry, continued his mission to learn how plants could help people. As Vice President, Henry wanted to help people around the world grow more food. So he hired a young man named Norman Borlaug, the same Norman who developed the special seeds that grew into super plants that fed hungry people. So you see, because Henry is the one who came up with the idea of special seeds and hired Norman to make them, it was really Henry who changed the world. Or maybe it was George. George? Hmm. Do you think they're talking about this George? The one who used to help Henry on his expeditions? By the way, are you noticing the butterflies on all the pages? Hmm, anybody guessed what the theme is yet? I want to tell you a story about the kid who changed the world. His name was George Washington. Now, before we continue, you must know that he is not George Washington, the president. The US president, George Washington, lived a long time before the George Washington in this story. George's father died before he was born and his mother died when he was very young. But the good news is that a nice couple named Moses and Susan Carver adopted George and made him a part of their family. Well, George, what have you got there? Asked his neighbor, Mrs. McCloyd, as she plopped down on a tree stump beside the young boy. I'm whittling a crutch for my friend who hurt his ankle. Just look at you, creating from that big old tree branch. George, you've got a sharp mind and a kind heart. Thank you, ma'am, but it's not much. Won't take me too long. I bet your friend will be mighty grateful for that crutch. You know, George, little things can make a big difference. Everything we do matters. Every action you take, even small things, can change the world. Sure enough, George Washington Carver changed the world. He became a teacher 
and an inventor. For instance, he invented 266 things from the peanut that we still use today. From the sweet potato, George invented 88 things we still use today. But he did something much more important than that. When George Washington Carver was at Iowa State University, he had a teacher named Professor Wallace. On weekends, George would roam the fields and forests with the professor's six-year-old son, Henry, teaching the boy about plants and how many ways they could be used to help people. Now, let's see here. Norman made the seeds that grew into plants that fed the world's hungry people, but he couldn't have done it without Henry, who had the idea to make super plants and hired him. But Henry would not have had the idea without George, who spent so much time teaching young Henry about plants. So there you have it. George Washington Carver was the kid who changed the world. Wait, we forgot about his mom, Susan. I want to tell you a story about a kid who changed the world. Her name was Susan. She lived on a farm with her mom and dad way up north. Susan pulled nails out of the old barn wood while her pet rooster Buzz watched. Susan, her mother called as she walked toward her in the field. What are you doing? Well, I figured if I got these nails out of this wood, we could reuse it for something like patching the chicken coop or building a playhouse. Thank you, Susan. Those are wonderful ideas. I'm sure Buzz will appreciate a snug home come winter, she said with a smile. He hasn't helped with a single nail, Susan giggled. You know, dear, every choice you make, good or bad, can make a difference. I'm proud of you for making a good choice today. When Susan grew up, she married a man named Moses Carver, and together with a few workers, they managed a farm. They were very happy, but one night some men tried to hurt them. Outlaws called Quantrill's raiders rode into the farm. They burned down Susan and Moses' barn and kidnapped some of the workers. One of the people they kidnapped was a little boy named George. Oh no, their little boy, George, George Washington Carver. Susan had to do something. She and her husband searched and searched and finally found young George. Moses and Susan even traded their favorite black horse in return for the little boy. That night, beside the fireplace, as Susan rocked that baby, she told George that they would adopt him. Susan also promised to give the boy their name. As the baby drifted off to sleep, Susan whispered, good night, little George Washington Carver. So if Susan and Moses hadn't ever saved George from the outlaws, George wouldn't have grown up to take Henry on walks in the forest. Then Henry wouldn't have become interested in plants and later hired Norman. Without Henry's idea, Norman wouldn't have developed the special seeds that grew into super plants. And without the super plants, two billion people would have nothing to eat. It's odd, isn't it? Every time something happens, something else happens. That's called the butterfly effect. That's why there's so many butterflies in the story. This is the theme of this book. This book is all about the butterfly effect. When one thing happens, it causes something else to happen too. Think about when you smile at someone. What happens to that person? Do they usually smile back? And then that person filled with your joy and your happiness might smile at someone else who in turn might smile at someone else. When a butterfly flaps its wings, it moves tiny pieces of air that move other tiny pieces of air that move other tiny pieces of air. In fact, on the other side of the world, they might be feeling a big whoosh of wind all because a butterfly flapped its wings here just a few minutes ago. That means every little thing you do matters. Okay, you need to listen to that again, ready? 
every little thing you do matters. Notice it doesn't say every big thing you do, every big choice you make matters. Every little thing you do matters. What you did yesterday, what you do today, and what you do tomorrow. God made your life so important that every move you make, every action you take matters. And not only for you or the people around you, everything you do matters for everyone and for all time. And that is the theme of this book, isn't it? And just like Mrs. McCloyd said to young George, she said, George, you've got a sharp mind and a kind heart. And you know what, boys and girls, that's all it takes, isn't it? All of these characters, the people in this story, they learned more about what they were passionate about so that they could help change the world, but they had something else besides just what they learned. They had a kind heart that drove them to make good choices. Choices that were good for everyone, not just for themselves. And so I encourage you today, can you be the kid who changes the world?